Ahead for us this half hour, there is no hotter topic here in Bills country right now than the NFL's overtime rules. We'll talk live with the league's former head of officiating as a lot of people are calling for change. Plus, what went wrong? Our Vic Carucci gives us his take on 13 seconds and perhaps some questionable coaching just before the game went into overtime. And it is tax time again with plenty of changes that you need to know before you file. A familiar financial face to Western New Yorkers will help us out a little bit later on. And we're glad you're here with us. The goal of the town hall is to dig into what you're talking about. And of course, last night's Bills loss in Kansas City is top of mind for so many, including lots of discussion about the NFL's overtime rules. Many of you say never should have gotten to overtime and you're right. No excuse with 13 seconds left in regulation to, you know, allow that team to gain 44 yards and then kick that field goal. But that happened. Then we went into overtime with rules that many people believe didn't give Buffalo a fair shot. And it's not just Bills fans complaining. Pro Football Talk tweeted this to its 1.7 million followers saying the overtime rule for playoff games must change. If this one doesn't spark a more fair approach, nothing ever will. A lot of fans, analysts and players, both current and former, have come out demanding change. Today, Bills quarterback Josh Allen not among them. It is what it is. If you go back a few years ago, the Chiefs lost in a very similar situation to the Patriots. And I think the next year, uh, those Chiefs went on to win the Super Bowl. So and I'm not one to try to change rules or complain about the rules. They are what they are. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, we are fortunate right now to have Dean Blandino joining us live to discuss. He is rules analyst for Fox and former NFL vice president for officiating. Dean, it's great to have you on. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me. I want to show our viewers your tweet from last night. Uh, you said that the NFL overtime rule adheres to the theory that the game can end at any time on any play. Don't leave your seat. It maintains all three phases and any one can be the difference. So explaining kind of uh, why this rule is the way it is. Yeah. I don't think anybody was going to leave that game, um, but we certainly get your point on that. I want to also, though, show our viewers uh, this next, if we can kind of keep going here. Um, there is a, a report from Ian Rappaport sharing this from NFL Research, showing that under the current rules, 11 playoff games have gone to overtime. The team that won the coin toss in overtime won 10 of those 11 games. In seven of them, the coin toss winner just got a touchdown on the far, first drive, so, you know, it was over immediately. Don't those stats show that the coin toss essentially determines the winner, especially with a game like last night where, you know, neither defense was going to stop either offense? Yeah, I mean, those stats are compelling when you look at just the postseason. And, and this is something that I get it. Look, I get it as a fan. I would have loved to have seen Josh Allen and the Bills offense get a chance to go down the field and, and match Kansas City. But I think, you know, like like I said in my tweet, there's there's a basic foundation that, that NFL overtime adheres to. And then you've got to think about, okay, the postseason numbers, those, those are compelling. But since we've we've implemented the current rule when the league went to 10 minutes in regu in regulation uh, 10 minutes in regular season overtime since 2017 80 there's been 69 overtime games five have ended in ties 81 percent of those games both teams have won ha have have had at least one possession and of the 64 games that didn't end in a tie 50 percent of the time the team that won the toss won the game and 42 percent of the time the team that lost the call the, the toss um, won the game so so those numbers are not as compelling and the competition committee will certainly look at all of that and i think the other thing we've got to think about is when you when you make changes and and i agree with josh in terms of of not wanting to, to change a bunch of rules you can't overreact to one play or one situation now again the postseason numbers will will are more than just this one game but you've got to think about the highest priority whenever you're changing rules is player safety and the nfl has changed overtime rules to limit the number of snaps that players play and this would be extending games for players that are already tired, especially in the regular season when maybe you're, you're playing a, a Sunday game and you've got to turn around and play Thursday. So I think you've got to keep that in mind as well. Maybe it's just a postseason rule because obviously these are one and done games, um, but you, you have to look at all of those factors. And I know the competition committee will look at those factors and I see both sides. I get it. 
But at some point, right, if, if the Bills had had an opportunity to match and score a touchdown, now we're in sudden death. The Chiefs get the ball, they kick a field goal, the game over. We're probably still upset that Josh Allen didn't get the ball back <laughs> and have a chance to match. So at some point, we've got to end the game and keep those other things in mind. Yeah, I think a lot of people calling for equal number of possessions, and then it becomes like, well, how do you work that out? Do you do what, what happens, you know, in NCAA at the college level or, or what? And, and that system's not perfect either. Before we run out, Dean, I want to ask you, you mentioned um, the committee that may look at this. You know, the Chiefs proposed changing the rule after the 2019 playoff game when they were on yeah. the other side of this. Uh, it was interesting earlier today, um, Coach Reed uh, in, in KC was saying he agrees the rule ought to change. That never got a vote um, among the league owners. How do you see this playing out, and do you think there's a chance that we do see a change? Well, I think there there will certainly be a proposal or two. Last year, there were there were Baltimore and 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 had a proposal. They called it the spot and shoes. It was a little bit it, it was layered, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was a little bit different. And and I like that outside the box thinking. But I think we are going to see certainly a healthy conversation amongst the competition committee, amongst the coaches subcommittee, which works with the competition committee, of which Andy Reid is the chair. And I think we're going to see a, a good long conversation about this. They'll analyze the numbers. They'll take all those things that we talked about earlier into consideration. And, uh, and I would imagine there'll be a proposal. Uh, again, I'm not in favor of just changing rules for one situation, but but Obviously, it's a big deal, and uh, and you you want it to be as fair as possible. But we've just got to be mindful of that search for perfect fairness has what led the NFL rulebook to go from 50 <laughs> pages to 300 pages, and to make some people feel like the rules are too complicated. So we've got to keep keep that in mind as well. It's like a cheesecake factory menu when you're going through the yes. rules for the NFL. It, it's yes. seemingly never ending. We were showing video yeah, there, by the way. Add another, we don't need to add another entree. Yeah, exactly. We were showing video there of Tom Brady because he was, of course, quarterback um, of the Patriots back in 2019 when they were on the opposite end of what KC is on now. So that's what you were seeing. Dean Blandino is former VP of officiating for the NFL, now rules analyst with Fox. Great to have your perspective and insight on this. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, Vic Carucci is our two on your side, Bills and NFL insider, and he joins us live now as well. So Vic, let's start with your reaction to what Dean said there and whether or not you think this is going to lead to any change. I think it's going to lead to discussion for sure. And don't be surprised. Remember, the proposals are put forth by ownership of teams. Don't be surprised if uh, you, you might have heard of these people, the Pagulas. <laughs> they, they might be submitting some kind of proposal uh, when it comes to the competition committee meetings in the off season, uh, when we get into March. So I, I expect discussion. Do I really expect change? No, because it does get to a vicious cycle. As Dean Blandino points out, you're going to keep going back and forth with, well, how many possessions are fair if you're trying to make it fair? And I really don't like the, the modification of the game. I don't want overtime to suddenly look different than the game we saw for four quarters. The NCAA does that. I don't like it. I want football to still look like football, even in overtime. The other big discussion after the loss, Vic, is of course on coaching, especially the final sec uh, 13 seconds of regulation um, with the kickoff and then the ensuing kind of defensive scheme that they had. Um, the Buffalo News gave coaching an F on the weekly report card. Does that match up with how you would, would grade how that game ended in terms of coaching? That might have been a little harsh. Uh, you know, if you want to give both defensive coaches F's go right ahead because this was not about defense in at any point in the game. We're fixated on those final 13 seconds. I understand that. Did you notice though, that the Bills scored a couple of touchdowns in the last two minutes to lead to these 13 seconds. You can't forget that part of it. This was a heavyweight match back and forth 15 rounds. And the final punch was going to be landed by one of these teams. Well, it was the chiefs. Now, the, the frustration, the anger, the, the hot take has been on the Bills coverage issue that led to the tying field goal. And look at Jason Kelsey and look how free he was able to run. They were playing outside technique. They were pr protecting the sideline so that a receiver couldn't catch the ball, go out of bounds, stop clock. They're also playing deep to protect the end zone. So Kelsey did get some free run. But for the vast majority of that game, he was well covered by the Bills defense. He did his damage late and damage is damage. But if they devote more time, put an inside coverage guy on him, somebody is unaccounted for. 
somebody can make a play with a guy named uh, Patrick Mahomes scanning the field and playing the game of his life, not unlike the one that Josh Allen played. Vic, we are out of time. We were going to ask you about sort of the historic nature of this game. Would you agree that this was one of the greatest, if not the greatest ever? Oh, absolutely. And I'm old enough and been around long enough to see uh, witness a lot of these great ones. It is right up there. Again, I know painful loss for Bills fans. They don't want to hear that yeah. great anything, but it was a great one. Absolutely. Vic Carucci, uh, a serious XM host and our NFL and Bills insider here at Channel 2. Great to see you, Vic. Thanks.